Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. With the most recent updates concerning matchmaking, there's not really a whole lot to talk about in terms of major updates for items or for investments. So for that reason, we're going to be taking a look in retrospect at all of the previous tournament years and talking about what you should be looking forward to in terms of the future for each of those tournament year stickers. Some of them are good investment prospects, some of them not so much, and are ones that you should probably avoid, but we're going to be taking a look at them in this video, right after a word from our sponsor, GamerPay. The sponsor for today's video is GamerPay, the official skin trading website of the ninjas in pajamas. Apart from supporting my beloved Brolins, GamerPay has a lot of great features on their site. As you're scrolling through the site, every skin is on display in a very readable fashion. You can see the stickers the skin has, you can see case hardened patterns. One of the best things about the site is when you actually go to purchase one of the skins, you can see a lot more details that you normally wouldn't be able to see on a lot of other websites, like an overview of the seller and their join date on Steam and all of that important information. On top of that, you can also see the fees that you're going to be incurring right there. There's nothing hidden to you at all. GamerPay is extremely transparent with their fee structure. After you pick up the skin that you want, the trade will automatically be filled out using your API key and sent to the person that will then have to accept it. Now, if you're interested in selling your skins on GamerPay, that is also really easy to do, and they give you a nice overview of all of the statistics for your inventory, what they'll pay you, stuff like that. Now, a revolutionary feature of this site that I was really surprised to see myself was you can actually view any skins that you're looking to purchase in 3D. Complete with inspect animation, firing animation, everything you can really think of. Anyone who sells on GamerPay can get their own 3D store that anyone can go into and view all of the skins they have available for sale. It even works with knives and gloves. I think this aspect of the site really shows how much GamerPay cares about the buyer and seller. They've clearly put a lot of detail and design into making this website a great experience for either of those two parties. You can see even more of this detail orientation. If you go into your profile page on the website, you can choose the currency that you view the site in. You can choose if you want to see buff price comparisons. You can even go as far to customize the fee that you see when you deposit, which by the way are very reasonable fees. It's only 2.5% if you use your wallet or 5% if you use your card. GamerPay has a wide array of trusted partners and a really great website that was clearly built with love. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, be sure to use the link in the description below to support me. Thanks. All right, so many of you are probably expecting me to start off with Katowice 2014, but that is in fact not the first time that we got tournament stickers. The first time that we got tournament stickers was actually DreamHack 2013, and the stickers are specific and special to that tournament, and they only appear on souvenir weapons. These stickers are super small, and if everybody was just an ant playing CSGO, then these stickers would probably actually look pretty nice. However, unfortunately, it seems that CSGO had not hit their stride with designing stickers, and these ones have probably one of the worst designs overall for any tournament, just because they automatically come scratched and they are just so small you can barely even see them. So obviously the elephant in the room here is that these stickers are super, super rare. Any decently high tier skin with DreamHack 2013 stickers on it is going to be something that collectors are always going to be looking for. So the sheer rarity and the fact that this is just one of the historical milestones for CSGO in the very early days is always going to attract some sort of a buyer. These are really hard to price though, and as a result it's also really hard to tell how these are going to go in the future as an investment. But if CSGO were to really go crazy, get a gigantic player base on par with something like Roblox, then there will probably be a pretty nice market for something as old and as rare as these skins. Right now they are not really viewed as sort of a chase item though, and there's actually a lot of people that don't even know they exist. So I would recommend probably not investing in these, but you can get some pretty cheap low-end ones on the Steam community market if you're lucky, and maybe picking up a couple of those that you think are cool might be a good option for the future in case something changes. Next up, a staple legend in the sticker investing scene, Katowice 2014. These stickers are obviously legendary. They boast some of the highest prices of any item in CSGO period, and are widely regarded by many as the best sticker release ever done. So even just seeing these in people's inventory is a pretty crazy sight. These will almost always have demand, and the market for them just continues to go up over time. Luckily, thanks to the fact that there are paper versions of the stickers, and the fact that many were crafted onto actual skins, there is actually a way for low-end investors to invest into Kato 2014 to some degree by buying lower-end skins with the lower-end Kato 14 stickers, and for the higher-end investors, obviously they can buy any Kato 14 sticker that they want. On release, stuff like the Titan Hollow and the I by Power Hollow were selling for even as low as a dollar on the Steam community market, and by now their price is just absolutely unfathomable, with the lowest listing for the I by Power Hollow on buff being 500,000 Rambuani or 74,000 USD. There's no real obvious cons to investing in Keto 14. 
it is something that I can technically recommend. There's always plenty for sale, so it's not entirely hard to find one. And because they're so beloved and desired and only get rare by the day, their prices should continue to climb over time, and having these sitting in your inventory is never really a bad idea. They are maybe on the slower end of moving up just because of how rare they are and how rare the sales are for them because of how expensive they are but they will pretty much always have value until the market dies completely. In terms of overall sticker investing in tournaments, these are on the better end. Still in 2014, we move on to Cologne. Cologne 2014 has a lot of pretty bad stickers, pretty awful ones that no one's really too interested in. But at the same time, it also features another iteration of the I Buy Power Hollow, this time definitely not as good as Cato 14's, and it offers an iteration of the Dignitas Hollow, this time being a pretty solid one, still having those holographic alien eyes, which is something that many people are after. And that story, of course, is told by its price, where it currently sits at a solid $530 on the Steam Community Market. But besides the I Buy Power and Dignitas Hollow, there's not really many other decent stickers. In terms of long-term holding, the only ones you're going to want to go for are that Dignitas and I Buy Power Hollow. Anything else and you just simply are going for a pretty mid-investment. Not really anything that's worth dedicating your money towards if you're not going for one of the really good-looking high-tier ones. And I would pretty much avoid the papers at all costs if you're not going for just the I Buy Power or Dignitas one. Although some people like the Vox Eminor iteration here as well. Next up a pretty legendary set of stickers is Katowice 2015. Here we have the whole spectrum of papers, foils, and hollows, and these are definitely one of the more liked stickers of all time. In the case of Kato 15, I would definitely focus on the hollows and kind of ignore the foils and papers. And in terms of the hollows, you can pretty much go for anything. There are high-end hollows that just look super nice, and there are lower-end hollows for the people that aren't going to dedicate too much to it. Each hollow has its own real personality and color scheme, and each hollow fits a different kind of weapon in CSGO, so there's always desire to apply these to weapons. Depending on how the player base evolves over time, I think Cato 15 hollows are going to be one that are really going to skyrocket at some point. It just kind of has to hit this like critical mass of supply that really sends them to the top. I can't really give you a specific recommendation to invest into for the hollows because they're really all good and they're all going to be a solid option to buy into. None of the hollows really look bad, they just look different. And with a lot of print stream skins coming out, even the lower end blue and gray looking hollows still have a decent amount of demand for secret crafters. So yeah, just really solid year here, at least for the hollows. And those are always going to be a good option and pretty solid to invest into. Next up, Clone 2015, which there isn't really going to be much to say here. I'm going to keep it short and simple. If you're not going for the Titan Foil, you're not going to get anything good. The Titan Foil is really the only thing here that has any sort of draw whatsoever. This was a pretty poor release for stickers. It is worth mentioning though that TSM Kingwin actually has a Penguin sticker from this iteration. And who knows, at some point that might get some sort of attention or draw. But other than that, pretty poor iteration of stickers. And now we move on to arguably the worst sticker release of all time, Kludge Napoka 2015. Once again, only thing here to look at at all is the Titan stickers. These were just straight up a bad release of stickers. But there are quite a few highly sought after autograph stickers from this year, so if that's more your cup of tea, go for it. But this video is for team stickers, not autograph stickers. Since this is a short segment though, I figured I'd mention it. With 2016 MLG compilations hitting the internet, we also had the MLG CSGO tournament. This was the one and only time MLG hosted a tournament, and it was arguably one of the most fun tournaments of all time. They even featured an all-star playoff in the tournament, which created some really cool all-star stickers, so I'm a big fan of MLG. Unfortunately, the sticker prospects here aren't really great either. The only real big one would be like Luminosity foils. Those look really, really nice, but in terms of overall investments, MLG 2016 was just not great. I personally think this is a really clean iteration of stickers, and I think these definitely have potential in the right market eyes, but so far their performance has been pretty lackluster, and I expect much of the same in the years to come. So I would kind of avoid this year as a whole. Maybe cop a Luminosity 2016 foil if you got the money to spend on it though. And the hollow is pretty nice too. Regardless of my opinion of these stickers though, the story of their price levels is not something that I can change. So overall I wouldn't be looking at this tournament, at least for the time being. And the final tournament to look at for the part one of this video is Cologne 2016. Cologne 2016 was a solid year, there are some solid stickers here. There's the big one, the Dignitas 2016 Hollow. It doesn't have the really cool Hollow alien eyes, but it is a Hollow Dignitas sticker, and for that reason alone it does have some demand. It also sports the highest price level overall for Cologne 2016. But there are plenty of other really cool options here as well. I personally am a big fan of the G2 stickers from this tournament. The 
red and black looks really good, especially on the foil. These were definitely one of the better iterations of foil stickers in CSGO's history. And if anyone's reminiscing about foils after they were taken out, I would go and check these ones out. They were a good example of foils in my opinion. Dignitas wasn't necessarily king of this tournament though. Flipside Tactics had some really cool iterations, and Phases Hollow was also pretty cool with a little blue accents. One of the only iterations of the Optic Gaming sticker was also at this tournament, so that is pretty cool as well. This is definitely one of those more underrated years that could definitely spike in price like Cato 15 as well, so I'd keep your eye on it. It's one of the cheaper options to get a Dignitas sticker, and so there's going to be some demand for those of course. But yeah, a lot of solid options here. Definitely a more overlooked tournament in terms of investments. If I were you, I'd at least keep your eye on it. This is also one of the only other iterations of Counter Logic Gaming and SK Gaming, and they did a pretty phenomenal job designing those two stickers in particular, so those are something to look out for as well. There's also Astralis and Navi from this tournament, which is kind of surprising, but those are pretty basic picks for stickers. There are definitely some more interesting sticker iterations here. But that is pretty much going to wrap up part one. I'm aiming for part two to be out tomorrow. There's just a lot of tournaments to go over in the second half of the tournament list. So to be safe, I wanted to split this into two parts. This video obviously is already beyond 10 minutes. That being said, I wanted to thank you guys for watching part one. Be sure to come back for part two when it's uploaded. Go ahead and check out my Discord community down below. We have giveaways and investment chats and all great things like that. You can also be sure to follow me on Twitter where I'm going to have some more micro investment tips here and there. Subscribe to the channel for the best investment tips anywhere else on YouTube before CSGO. And be sure to check out GamerPay, one of my favorite third-party marketplaces. And that's that, guys. See you soon. Peace.